well on your quiz yesterday. Those in the classroom here did a great job on their quizzes. So I think it was all A pluses. Not all hundreds, but all A pluses. So a good job on those. Um, go ahead and turn in your textbooks to page 173. I gave you opportunity to, to do two different extra credit problems, and uh, Scott and Josh have indicated that they attempted these. So gentlemen, if you're going to put your pencils, pens away, Lana, if you'll have out some paper, and if you'll go ahead and work these with us as we go over them, let's see how we did. Let's start with number three, and Joshua, go ahead and read that pro problem for us. John just began mowing lawns for $20 per lawn. How many lawns must he mow to earn at least $50 plus $120 he spent on the mowing? All right. So um, there's really only one unknown here, right, Joshua? And that is? The number of lawns. The number of lawns. And uh, so if that's the only unknown, then we can represent it as X. All right. So uh, we know this. He gets $20 per lawn, meaning $20 for every single lawn he mows. So if he mows one lawn, that would be twenty dollars. If he mows two lawns, that'd be forty. Forty dollars. Three lawns, sixty dollars. Right? What about X lawns? Um, X plus twenty. Yeah. One plus twenty is twenty, and two plus twenty is forty, and three plus twenty is sixty. Yeah. No, but one. Twenty X. Twenty X. There we go. We took twenty dollars times the number of lawns he mowed. That would give us the money he made, right? Now, how much money does he need to make, Joshua? 170. He needs to make at least 170, right? Because he spent 120 on the mower in the first place, okay? So he needs to recoup all of that money, but he also wants to make an extra $50, right? So his, like, his goal is like, I gotta make at least 50 bucks off of this thing, okay? Which means he needs to make at least 170, right? How would we say at least? Greater than or equal to 170, or the way our book has it is 50 plus 120, but just combine it in your head, it's 170. Um, you did not have that, you had x plus 20, greater than or equal to 170, did you have it correct? All right, so uh, we can knock a zero off of both sides here and then just divide away a two, and that'll give us x is greater than or equal to eight and a half. Now, remember, this means the number of lawns, right? Can you mow? Well, I guess technically you could mow a half a lawn, but is anyone going to actually pay you if you only mow half a lawn? I get right down the middle. All right, I'm done. I know I was going to charge you 20 bucks, but uh, just give me 10. I mowed half. I ain't giving you nothing until you finish. I'm going to give you all 20 and never hire you again. What kind of nut are you? Okay. So for him to mow greater than or equal to eight and a half lawns means he has to mow how many lawns? Nine lawns. And there's our answer. Is that what you have? It's not what you have. Oh, is eight greater than or equal to eight and a half, though? Now, there was a time we rounded down, right? But that was for a less than or equal to. This is a greater than, so you have to go up from the eight and a half, at least nine lawns. Um, Lana, did that answer your question, or did you have a separate question? I thought I saw your hand a moment ago. Um, yeah, I was going to ask, why are you down? Why not down? Because your answer has to satisfy. And is eight greater than or equal to? No, but nine would be greater than. All right, so no extra credit point for three. Um, let's give it a shot on four. So again, pencil away Joshua for this one. And uh, Scott away, not just on your desk, because uh, I don't trust anybody. All right, <laughs> and number four, Scott, go ahead and read number four. Seven and six and four plus one third of one both third of one third. Three times a hundred people is one third of a people. If the maximum of 1,200 people, total people is 100 people, what is the most that day is one of one third of it? All right, so how many unknowns? Three. And they are? Three one third. And which one did you choose to be X? Thursday. And how'd you represent Saturday? 3X. All right. And it said a maximum of 1,200 people. All right. Total. So what was your inequality? 4X is less than or equal to 1,200. Good. 4X, the combined total, is maximum 1,200, meaning less than that or equal to 1,200 people. Was that your inequality as well? All right, and so we uh, divide by four. We end up getting x has to be less than or equal to 300. But because of the or equal to, we don't have to go down. It's not less than 300 where it must be 299. It's less than or equal to. So Thursday could have been 300 people at most. And Saturday there would have been 900 at most. 
most, so that at most 1,200 people attended. It only asked for, sorry, for Saturday. So we're only interested in the 900. Is that what you guys had? Excellent. Let me go and check. Excellent. And excellent. Yes. All right. So one extra credit point each for Scott and Joshua. And Lana, does that make sense? All right. Any questions on those? Again, as I said yesterday, they're not going to be... Uh, they're not going to be tested on this. Okay, this is an algebra one level thing we'll do next year, but just wanted to kind of show it to you. Any questions? All right, let's move on and turn the page to page number 176. And we're going to get back to something that I introduced to you once before, and that's something called a proportion. Do you remember how I defined a proportion uh, several weeks ago? That's almost a couple months ago now, Lana. Anyone remember how I defined a proportion in plain English? It's two fractions set equal to each other. Oh. You have two fractions set equal to each other, you've got a proportion. Though so generally we don't call them fractions, we generally call them ratios. ratios. Good. So if you will jot this off to the side there on page 176, a proportion is technically two equal ratios. Two equal ratios is a proportion. For instance, um, Give me a not too hard ratio, Lana. Um, Make something up. Just give me easy numbers. Three to seven. Three to seven. There we go. Okay, so three to seven is a ratio. Scott, give me a ratio that would be equal to three to seven. Twenty-one to forty-nine. Twenty-one to forty-nine. Would we agree that these are equal ratios? Now. If, uh, if I didn't give you the 49, if I had instead an x, we could easily solve for the x by saying, well, what did we do to the 3 class? Yeah. Multiply by 7. So what did we do to 7? Yeah. Multiply by 7, and we wind up with a 49 right there, right? So that's what we did, for the most part, in our, uh, in our last round of proportions way back in Chapter 1. We did something called the equal ratio method, and it worked great most of the time. A couple terminolo little terminology I want to share with you again. <clears throat> if you would, write this proportion in your textbook there off to the side and label the 7 and 21 as the means. I believe I gave you this term back in chapter 1. Do you recognize the means? Okay. So remember, the means are these. Uh, if you were to count in order, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 2 and 3 are kind of in the middle. The means are in the middle, particularly if you learn as 3 to 7. As 21 is to 49, you see that the middle terms are the mean. Do you remember what we call the first and the fourth terms? The Good, the extremes. They're on the edges. So the 3 and the 49 are the first and fourth terms. They are the extremes. And um, I told you this, that normally equal ratio method, if the numbers are nice and easy, go for it, right? But we did some problems where the equal ratio method just didn't work. Do you remember what I said to do if you couldn't use the equal ratio method, Joshua? Cross multiply. Cross multiply, right? So we could solve a proportion by cross multiply. So for instance, if I didn't know, if for some reason I couldn't think 3 times 7, 21, or I don't know why I couldn't, we could cross multiply. Because as you see there in bold, mark that statement, the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. And I think I had you write that down back in chapter 1. Does that sound vaguely familiar? Yeah, we said it over and over again, I think, as a class, right? My memory's not too good, so I don't remember if we did or not. Let's go ahead and say it together as a class here, just to make sure your memory is good. In any proportion, the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. Now, I like to start with the x, which is in the extremes. So I'm going to say the product of the extremes here, class, equals the product of the means. 7 times 1, and 7 times 2, 14, so 147, right? And then we can divide both sides by 3. 3 goes into 14. Five, uh, four. Almost 5. 4 times the 2 left over. 3 goes into 27. Nine. Now, again, I think it's a lot easier to use the equal ratio method. But, kind of makes it hard now, right? Yeah. 7 times 20 would have been just 140. 140. 3 still goes into 14 4 times with 2 left over. 3 goes into 20. Six. six times with two. Two. two left over. So the cross multiplication method, really the only time I'm going to push you to use it is if you can't use equal ratio. I mean, if you can use equal ratio,
ratio method people. Let's be lazy, right? Let math be easy. But if the equal ratio method doesn't really work, just cross multiply because the product of the means. Simplify. All right. Well, look at the examples that they have here uh, in the yellow box. They give you this um, 5 is to a half as 20 gives to x. Now, again, to me, I think equal ratio method works fine here. 5 times what gives 20 class? 4. 4. What's a half times 4 or half of 4? 2. 2. Boom, we're done. Okay? But you could also use the, equal, the uh, cross multiplication method. 5 times x? 5x. And half of 20? 10. And now you can see that x is going to equal 2 when you divide both sides by 5. Right? So either method works in many cases. Um, you look at the, the blue box problem just above it. 5 is to x is 9 is to 3. What do you multiply 5 by to get 9? Nothing. Or rather, what do you divide 9 by to get 5? Oh, I don't know. Well, cross multiply. 9x equals 15. Divide it. 15 ninths, which reduces to 5 thirds or 1 and 2 thirds. I don't mind improper fractions, by the way. So, um, 140 thirds is technically correct. Uh, laziness, extreme laziness is great. Questions on this? Turn the page over to page 178. Page 178. Number one, you see x is to 5 is 4 is to 2. Hmm. Um, now, I actually see a way to do kind of the equal ratio method thing idea here. All right? So, what do you multiply 2 by to get 5? No, uh, no. Well, what do I multiply 2 by to get 4? What do I multiply 5 by then? 2. Multiply 5 by, okay. Maybe this, this, is, this is my shortcut <laughs> here, but this is maybe going a little over your head, so maybe I shouldn't give this to you, okay? To get a 4, you've got to multiply by 2, right? Because the antecedent, the numerator, is twice the consequent. Well, for that to be true here, that has to be true here as well, right? Because they're equal ratio. What is the number that's left here? 10. So you could do this way the equal ratio method, or sometimes you can even do it that way, right? Or you could cross multiply. 2 times x? 2x. 5 times 4? 20. 20x equals 10. Whichever method, right? So if you can see number patterns like I see them, man, you can get done with these in a, block, in a hurry. Unless <clears throat> you've got something like number 2. What do you multiply or divide 9 by to get 6? Okay, what do you multiply 9 by to get 14? Okay, just cross multiply. Multiply your means. 9x. And then multiply the extremes. 84. Divide both sides by 9. Now, I would say, hey, let's just leave 84 ninths, but we can reduce it. You see there's a 3 in 84? The sum is 12. So we at least have to divide 3 out of both of these. Or just go with the mixed number approach. You know 9 goes in 84 how many times? Um, uh, eight. Nine. 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 nine times nine, nine. is eighty-one. It goes in nine times, but how many left? Uh, uh, three. Three. Yeah, eighty-four <laughs> minus eighty-one is three. Okay, there we go. So nine and three ninths, which you can see that more easily. Nine and a third, but to reduce by three, you get a three down here. Let's see, three goes into eight. Two. Two times one, or two left. <laughs> three goes into twenty-four. Eight, eight times three. We can leave twenty-eight thirds. We can say nine and a third. A couple ways you can get that answer there for number two. Questions on the options you have available. Cross multiplication, by the way, always works. So if you're like, my head is spinning with so many choices, you know, like how many of you, you go down the checkout aisle and you see all the little candy bars there? Mm -hmm. Now, how many of you, if your mom says, you may have a candy bar, you just grab one and you're good? Anyone like that? How many moms says you can choose a candy bar? You're going to spend the next five minutes agonizing over which one is yeah, the right one to choose. Me. See, that, that <laughs> tends to be, I, I'm like, okay, I want to get this right, okay, of all the options that are here. But then I, I, I might feel like, anyway, and some people are just like, I'm just going to pick one. All right, if you can pick one very quickly and easily and just roll with it, more power to you. But if you're one of those who's like, I'm going to sit there and stare and wonder which way to do it, just cross multiply because it always works. Does equal ratio method always work? Mm -hmm. But cross multiplication always does. So maybe default to that. But it's your choice. That's the beauty of math in this case. You have the choice. I want you to do numbers 3 through 6. You choose the method. 3 through 6 there on page 178. Page 
Number three, uh, this one's almost insulting. Number three, what's X, Lana? 11. 11. 3 11ths equals 3 11ths. Wait, yes. what? I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and this is why sometimes, like you're doing standardized tests. Y'all know those, the Iowa tests you normally take at the end of the year? We didn't this last year because of COVID. But, um, and you're like, you're like working on like problem number 12, and like you hear this person's pencil, they're kind of like, how are they doing it already? Because they see things like that. And they're like, 11. <laughs> um, now, numbers, number uh, four, not quite as nice to you. Okay, got to do a little bit more work here on number four. Joshua, what did you get for your answer? 15. 15. Number five, um, also not quite as nice to us. Uh, what did you get, Scott? 24 fifths, you could say four and four fifths, or even 4.8, but I'm lazy, I'm doing 24 fifths. And then uh, number six, what did you get, Lana? 10. How many got three through six all correct? Go on and do seven through 12. Go on and do seven through 12 now. together. Number seven, what did you get, Joshua? Twelve. X equals twelve. Number eight, Scott? Twenty-five sixths, or if you must, four and one-sixth, but please not four point one six repeating. <laughs> Number nine, Lana? Twelve and one-fourth. Twelve and one-fourth, or just forty-nine fourths, or uh, twelve point two five. Number ten, Joshua? Five and a half. Or five point five, or just eleven halves. Uh, number eleven, Scott? One and number twelve, Lana. Eleven point five nine. Good. Or one hundred four ninths, or eleven point five repeating. Yes, ma'am. 
So number eleven, I figured out that if you divide four divided by four is one, so I divide that with yeah. another two. Yeah, that makes sense. And then the other equal ratio yeah. method was the easy way to do that one, wasn't it? And then which other one you said? No, that was the that one. Was the one. Okay, sorry, I thought you were starting to mention another one. Yeah, equal ratio method works great on number 11. So if it's there, use it, and if it's not, cross multiply. Not a big deal. Turn back, if you would, to page 176, and let's take a look at how we can use proportions to solve word problems. Now, they label these proportion word problems. I want you to cross out the word proportion. I want you to write the word ratio. I prefer to think of these as ratio word problems. Here at the bottom of page 176, See that little heading thing with the little red star next to it? It says proportion word problems. Change that to say ratio word problems. Because the word problem will actually mention a ratio, and that's how you know it's a ratio word problem. See, I like math to be easy, right? So look, for instance, at the problem in the blue box. Scott, read it for us, if you would, sir. The Missouri Board of Sales and the Missouri Class is certified. They have 15 employees from their bills in the class. All right. So one way to solve a proportion word problem is to start by making the ratio. They say there's a ratio of 4 to 5. So go ahead and just write down that first ratio. But as you do so, make a mental note. This is a ratio of who to who? Boys to girls. This is a ratio of boys to girls. And then we're going to set this ratio equal to another ratio. And it better be boys over girls. What's the other number that they give us, class? 16 boys. So where do I put the 16? At the top. In the top. And since it says how many girls, what do I put at the bottom? X. And uh, I'm going to use equal ratio method here and do it in my head. What's X? 20. 20. Right? Times 4 times 4. Oh. You get your 20. And boom, we're done. So in some cases, ratio word problems could be easily solved this way. Uh, and you see the work actually set out there on uh, the top of page 177. Um, look at the example problem, 4.6b. Go ahead and read that for us if you would, Joshua. Megan drew a map of her backyard with a scale of 180 feet by 3 feet. If one side of her backyard is 20 feet long, what is the length of the line roughly one yard on the map? All right. Now, anytime you're given a scale, a scale is a ratio. It's comparing two things together. And the scale that we're given here, Joshua, is? One inch to three feet. So we're going to make a ratio of one inch to three feet. Notice we have inches over feet. What's the number that they give us next? 21 feet. 21 feet. There is a side of the backyard that's 21 feet. Where should I put the 21 feet? In the top or the bottom class? Bottom. In the bottom, because we have feet in the bottom. And the question is, how many inches, in other words, x, represent 21 feet? Seven. Again, you can do this in your head. Seven, seven, seven inches. Five. x is 7 inches, using that equal ratio method. Questions on that? There's another way, though, when given a ratio that you could solve a problem. And I like this method better because it works all the time. Um, <clears throat> Look at the next example in the blue box. Read that problem, Lana. Yep. Uh, inches and counting a ratio of 5 to 2. Split that 15 inches from your square and write a math answer to divide. Now, there's three ways in which you could work this. There's the book way, there's my way, and then there's my good way. I'm going to show you all three so that you can make a fair comparison because you may think, I know you pitched this one, Ms. Dresky. I think I like the other one better. So I'm just going to pitch them all to you. The given ratio is a ratio of 5 to 2. And uh, Lana, that's a ratio of what to what? Oh, um, pencils. Pencils. Oh, man, I can't just put P and P. Pencils to pens, right? So that means my other ratio needs to be pencils to pens. What's the un other number that they give us, Lana? 15. 15. Pencils. Pencils. So I need to put the 15 in the? Top. And since I don't know the number of pens, I can just say x. We can do the equal ratio method again to get that x is equal to 6. six. But Lana, that means 6 pens. It didn't ask how many pens. It said how many? Total. Total. Well, if he got 15 pencils and 6 pens, total, how many did he get, get class? 21. 21. I think that's a pretty easy way to set it up. Okay, so that's method number one. Method number two is the book way. 
where they say, okay, he bought in ratio of five to two, but notice it asks for how many total. And it also gives us 15 pencils. So notice in your book they say pencils to total, pencils to total. So here the X is the total number we're trying to find. This is pencils. This is pencils. This needs to be total. Well, notice if it's a ratio of 5 to 2, that means for every 5 pencils, that's 2 pens, but that's how many total? Seven. seven. So they say, let's make a ratio of 5 to 7. And do 5 is to 7, the total, as 15 is next. The only thing I think that makes this hard is you have to process that, and you can't just write down 5 to 2. See, I like easy, and to me, if I see a ratio of 5 to 2, you know what I want to write down? 5 to 2, because to me, that makes a whole lot of sense. All right? There's another way, and I want you to write this off to the side. If you're given a ratio of 5 to 2, this is pencils to pens, you have two unknowns, don't you? You have pencils, and you have pens. Now, question. Does this mean, if there are a ratio of 5 to 2, that there are 5 pencils and 2 pens? No. It could be, listen now and watch, 10 pencils and 4 pens. That would be a ratio of 5 to 2. It could be 50 pencils and 20 pens. You see that? 50 and 20. That would be a ratio of 5 to 2. It could be 500 pencils and 200 pens. You better be explaining to sell those because he's never going to use them all. Right? You get the idea? I know this, if they're in ratio 5 to 2, then if I multiply 5 times something, and I multiply 2 by the exact same thing, then whatever these numbers come out to, will be a ratio of 5 to 2. And so when I am given a problem with ratio 5 to 2, I like to represent them as 5x and 2x. I basically just stick an x on at the end of whatever. I could have done that coming over here to the ratio of boys to girls. If the ratio of boys to girls is 4 to 5, that doesn't mean there are four, bo four boys and 5 girls. It could mean there are 12 boys and 15 girls. Does that make sense? So instead, I'm just going to represent the boys class 4x four. Four and the girls 5x. Five. Five now you look at the number that you haven't used yet. Do you see how now I'm making this problem be exactly like all the other word problems? What's the number we hadn't used yet? Coming over your pens and pencils. Um, 15. Do you notice it said he bought 15 pencils? Pencils are 15. Pencils are 5x, pencils are 15. Class, what's x? Three. X is 3. But it didn't ask for what is x. It said how many total utensils. Well, how many total utensils do I have? 7x. 7x? Yeah, 21 utensils. But if it asks for how many pens? Oh, you mean how many pens? You mean 2x? 6 pens. I don't know how we got 3, though. Cause okay. Pencils is 5x. Pencils is 15. Pencils is both, right? So therefore, 5x must equal 15. Oh. So therefore, x has to be 3. Does that make sense? Come over here. In a problem of the four boys, boys and girls in ratio 4 to 5, we said 4x, 5x, right? But the other number, as you look across the page, where there were 16 boys. 16 boys? You mean 4x boys or 16 boys? Yeah, 4x is 16. So Lana, what's x? So if girls are 5x, how many girls? 20. 20. What if it had said how many total people were there? Um, uh, 36. 36. I can solve anything, and I don't even have to think about how to set up my proportion. It takes the thought out of it, and that makes life easy and allows me to be lazy. lazy. Yeah, so I prefer this method. It's just me personally. Turn the page. Let's look at an example problem where I'm going to do it my way instead of their way. And we'll see if it'll make sense to you. Example 4.6c and Scott, take it for us. The class was going to take 35 grand class lessons. The ratio is going to go on the round clock for 43, 100 grand 15 minutes. 
All right, the given ratio in the problem was a ratio of what to what? Four to three. Four to three, and that was a ratio of who to who? All right, so the ratio of wins to losses was a ratio of four to three. How should I represent my wins and losses class? Four X and three X. Because it's not necessarily four and three. It could be eight and six if the X was a two. It could be 20 and 15 if it was, you know, a five. It could be 400 to 300. That's a lot of wins. Uh, but you get the idea, right? It's four times something and three times the same thing. That'll put them in ratio four to three. Now we look for the number we haven't used yet. What's the number we haven't used yet, class? 35. 35. Is that wins or is that losses? Total. That's total gains. Oh, so total gains was 35. How, what's my equation? Total gains, which would be wins and losses, 35. What's x? 5. Oh, actually, I should use that by, as an example by mistake. So how many wins then? 20. 20. How many losses then? 50. Boom. I don't have to set up a proportion. I don't figure out have to have to figure out how to set up a proportion. What goes over what and where and across what? None of that. Because if the ratio is four to three, four x three x. And here's the other beauty of it. What if we wanted to compare several things? For instance, let's suppose we'll have we may have to lie a little here because I know all y'all are broke. But Scott, make up a number for how much money you think you have. Fifty dollars. Okay. Um, thirty. Thirty dollars. Thank you for picking a number ending in zero. Okay, let's say we want to compare you guys. And I said, Lana, Joshua, and Scott have money in ratio two to three to five. You can't make a proportion with three unknowns, but you can do my way with three unknowns. Watch. Lana, Joshua, and Scott have money in ratio two to three to five. How do we represent Lana, Joshua, Scott class? 2x, 2x, 5x. If they have $100 total, oh, total plus what's my equation? Um, 2x equals 300. Then x must equal 10. So how much does Lana have, class? 20. Joshua? 30. And Scott? 50. Now you can even work if there's more than two unknowns. You could do three, four, and frankly, you could put as many things in ratio as you want. You don't have to have just two. My method takes care of all of that. Obviously, I'm partial to my method. Um, do you feel like my method makes sense to you? It's not in the book. You're not going to find it anywhere. It's my method. But I, I like math to be easy, so I pick it. All right, questions on this. All right, let's look at some problems together now on page 179. <clears throat> and number 13. Go ahead and read that for us, if you would, Joshua. In a rail yard, two out of every 30 train cars are injured. Is there a 75 train car, 100 train car that injured? All right, now, I always grew up thinking the cars were the things that got pulled behind the engine, so engine and car are separate. They're considering engine one of the train cars. So, for instance, how many of y'all have to had a toy train when you were a little kid? You never had a toy train? Oh, you I'm did. a dude. I'm sorry, okay. I don't have Chloe well, plays with toy Tom, trains. My brother had Thomas train. Okay, so you had Thomas train. Okay, so so anyway, if you've got like a nine-piece train set, one's going to be an engine, the other eight are going to be the cars, right? Or you can say we have a nine-car train set, whatever, okay? They're just calling them all cars. But it says two out of every 30 are engines. Hmm. So two engines out of 30 total. Now, if they're giving you the total like this, it's going to make it a little bit harder because it, there's not two things to compare here. There's not engines to other cars, right? They're already comparing the engines to the total. Here, it's actually going to be easier to just set up the proportion, okay? They're just going to say engines out of a total of 30, two out of every 30, okay? And then the other number they give us is 75, 75 and those are the total number of cars, right? So 75 total gives me how many engines. Does that make sense? So if they're giving you a total as one of the comparison numbers, just go with the proportion. They're making it easy on you. Okay? And uh, so we could cross multiply, right? We could say 30 times x is 30x. 30x. 2 times 75. 150. Good. 150. And uh, knock off the zeros real quick. What's x? 60. Wait, 5. five. Oh, so apparently 5 engines. 
They say, what, what would it look like with your method, Mr. Dasky? Well, here you have to make up the unknown. You have to have engines and other. <laughs> and it's a little bit tough here. If a ratio of two engines out of 30 total, then that's two engines to 28 other. Does that make sense? Which now it's not easy anymore because I just had to subtract. I don't like subtracting because I'm lazy. Okay, so my method suddenly got harder than but we could represent engines to other as 2x and 28x. And total, 30x, there were 75. Divide both sides by 30. Oh, man. 30 goes into 75 how many times, class? Three. 2 with 15. 15 left over. But 15 30 it becomes 2 and a half. 2 times 2 and a half is 5 engines. You see how this time, because they gave you a total, it's easier just to roll with the proportion that they gave you. Yes, sir? What if you could just do the two and a half in your head? Yeah, if you could have done the two and a half here, you could have done the equal ratio method. And, and I can, most people can't deal with fractions in their head that easily, so I, I avoid doing that here. But yes, you're right. All right? You got the two and a half in your head right here? Yeah. And then the two and a half here to get the five? Yeah, if you can see fractions here, just most people don't. And so, you know, I mean, y'all are all straight A kids, but. On camera, I don't know that everyone watching this is going to be straight. So that's why I usually, even if there's a shortcut I would use, if I don't feel like most of my students now or future would understand it, I try to shy away from it. But right on you guys. Y'all are geniuses. All right. Um, <laughs> let's take a look at number 15. Go ahead and read that for us if you would now, Lana. Um, a job needs operators unknown. Uh, unknown. Unknown. Sorry, number 15. Did I say 14? Uh, number 15 right below it. Instead of some of four times as many grams of saliva, some have a few. If we store some of four times as many grams of one part of one part of four. All right, here do you see they're not comparing a part to the total? They're comparing one thing to a separate entity. So here's where my method, and most of the problems we work, frankly, are going to be like this, where it's two separate things completely, not one is included in the other. Two separate entities. And what are the two things we're comparing here, Lana? Um, one gram and one thing about generic. Generic, yeah. Generic means like Walmart brand or yeah. Sam's Club brand or Piggly Wiggly brand or whatever. Um, so name brand and generic. And it says, now notice they don't just put the ratio right in there, this to this. But they do kind of spell it out. They say they sell four cans of, of name brand for every seven cans of generic. Obviously, the ratio here is four to, four to seven. So how should I represent my unknown class? Four x seven x. What's the number we haven't used yet? Um, 40. Forty. Is that name brand, generic, or total? Total. That's total. They've sold no, Wait, no, it's not. Brand. That's name brand. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I thought. <laughs> Sorry, well, I'm just going along with what Lana's saying here. <laughs> 40 is name brand. Ah, so 40 is name brand and 4x is name brand. So what must x be, class? 10. 10. 40 equals 4x, divide both sides by 4. We're coming up that x is 10, which means how many generic? 70. 70. Is that what they asked? No. No, no it asked how many total. So, well, that's easy oh, enough. Yeah. How many total? 110. 110. Question on that? Yeah. Look at number 17. Read that one for us if you would now, Joshua. Um, a farmer owns five angels for every nine dairy cows. And the total number of cattle in his herd is 308. How many angels does the farm own? All right. So two kinds of beef out there, two kinds of cows. There's the dairy cows from which we get milk, cheese, butter, all that stuff. And there's the Angus cows from which we get steak hamburger. They sacrifice themselves. One type of cow gives of herself. The other type of cow gives up himself. All right. <laughs> and uh, we are appreciative of that sacrifice. Okay. So farmer owns nine dairy cows to every five Angus cows. Obviously the two unknowns here, Joshua. Angus and dairy. Angus and dairy. And um, if the ratio is five to nine, how should I represent my unknowns? 5x9. And the number we haven't used yet? 308. Is that Angus or is that dairy? Total. That's total. It really is total this time, yeah, okay? So if that's total, then what's my equation? Um, 
14x equals 300. And we just divide both sides by 14. Let's see here. Uh, 14 goes into 30 class. Two, two times with two, two, two left over. 40 goes into 28. Three. So apparently x is 22. It asks for how many mm -hmm. angus. So put that in for x. 5 times 22 gives us how many angus cows. 110 future steaks, and a bunch of other things, frankly, because they get a whole lot more than just steak. But uh, you know, one cow that comes with two porterhouse and multiple ribeye, and you know, anyway, and then lots of hamburger. And if you really get the meat of parts of the cow, Angus beef hot dogs, which still actually taste pretty good if you don't think about where they came from. <laughs> Number 19, Scott, go ahead and read it for us. <laughs> All right, the two unknowns are? Tex with and without tail. All right, tail and no tail, or tailless, okay? And uh, frankly, I've only flown like two kites in my life, and neither one actually had a tail. So, but in all the pictures, like as a little kid, the kite always has a tail, like the little world drawings when you're a little kid looking through picture books, kite, bird, leaf, you know, whatever. <laughs> kite always has a tail, but I've never actually flown a kite with a tail. All right, so uh, how does it compare tail to no tail? What's the ratio? Five to eight. Five to eight. That's tail to no tail? Yeah. You would hate to get that backwards, wouldn't you? Yes, tails to without tails is five to eight. Make sure you set up correctly. But it's not five and eight, but rather class five eight. and eight. eight X. The number we haven't used yet? 260. 260. 260. And is that the tail or no tail? Total. 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 260 kites, that's total. So my equation should be? 13x equals 260. There we go. And when we divide both sides by 13, let's see, 13 goes into 26. Two, two times. Any, how many left over? Zero. None. 13 goes into zero. Zero. All right, so x is apparently 20. How, what did it ask for? Tails? Yeah. That's tails. Okay. How many tailed kites are there? 100. 100 tailed kites. Kite. You've never flown a kite? No, I have. Oh, you have? Okay, good. I think I had a tail though. Did you? Okay, so you have experienced something I have never experienced, and that is a tailed tight. Tight, tail tight. Tailed kite. A tailed kite. Anyway, <laughs> tail. Oh, it says doesn't sound appetizing. Rather of a steak. Anyway, number 21. Last one. Lana, read it for us. Um, a parking garage after parking by the hour or by the day. Last week, there was a delay of hours a day parking of code 92. Out of 77 parking spots, how many were there during the day? Did you expect? All right. Yeah, so the parking ticket, the little part, the, the ticket is sometimes referred to as a stub. Mm -hmm. Really, normally, there's two parts of the ticket. There's the part that's torn off and the part that's kept. The stub is what they keep for admission. The ticket that tells you where you're going to go. So you're like, check here. That's why, you know, anyway, subtle arguments with other people. But anyway, um, yeah, so the two types of tickets are? Um, hourly to date. Hourly to date, right? Uh, hourly, if I can spell, to daily. And that was a ratio of? Um, Nine to two. And that was nine to two hourly to daily, right? Just making sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means I should represent my unknowns class. Yeah, that's here. All right, and the number we haven't used yet. Um, 77. 77. Is that hourly or daily? Total. That's total again. Now, oftentimes they will make it one of the two, and that's okay. We know how to work with that. But it happens to be total, so my equation, Lana. 11 so apparently x is um, 70. and they wanted hourly or daily oh daily daily okay so if x is 7 and daily is 2x how many daily parking tickets 14 14 there we go questions on how to solve ratio word problems now they say write a proportion i say huh, not if there's an easier way because I am lazy. lazy. Do you feel like the indoctrination is beginning to take you? Do you guys feel lazy this summer? You don't. Well, anyway, questions on this. We're going to practice more with this tomorrow. Tomorrow's lesson is a short lesson. It's only be a 40-minute lesson, but we'll practice with more of this then. Your homework for this evening is to do pages 179 to 180. Pages 179 to 180.
the review 23 through 39. So you're not actually going to be practicing with this tonight. We'll spend that time tomorrow practicing with this. But uh, page 179 to 180, the review, numbers 23 through 29. All right, have a wonderful rest. 23 through 39. That's what it said. 29. Oh, it's 39. 2, 3 through 3, 9. Okay. Yeah, it's all of the review. It's, it's all of it. The review, the whole thing. We would want to do like up through 38 or something. Scott just be like, no! But anyway, <laughs> 23 through 39. Just 